Hey everybody, and behold, the magic finger! And watch as it brings this 2D drawing into the third dimension. This blows now. Animation is a great medium, isn't it? You can express and produce whatever you want, and in all kinds of styles like traditional 2D hand-drawn, 3D CGI, stop-motion, cut-out animation, anything your heart desires. And because of the limitless options to put them in, like movies, short films, TV-length episodes, and even video games nowadays, all of these kinds of styles and ways of making this art form live in perfect harmony. But the same could be said for the silver screen. After being merely simple vaudeville film attractions during the very early 20th century, animated films would evolve into roughly 7 minute shorts that would typically play before the main feature, and are almost guaranteed to be traditional 2D animated. Granted, we also did get stop motion shorts like George Powell's Puppetoon shorts, but that was more so the exception rather than the rule, likely due to budgetary reasons. We also started to see the odd feature length animated film here and there, but it wasn't until Disney Snow White and the Seven Dwarves where it truly started to gain traction. The film was a revolutionary success and opened up not only Disney, but other studios to produce more feature length animated films to come, mostly in 2D cells. And despite cell animation having its limitations for what you could do in these films, studios kept producing these films for numerous decades, even in bleak ones like the 70s. But when the critically and commercially successful Disney Renaissance came along in the 90s, more studios than ever wanted that piece of the pie. During this, a then hardly known studio named Pixar would help out Disney in making caps to make 2D animation production more seamless and make it easier to implement 3D effects than with using cells. But in 1995, that very same studio would ruin everything. The first ever full length CGI animated film, Toy Story, was released revolutionizing 3D animation on top of being a pretty great movie, gaining plenty of attention from animation studios around the world. But the technology was still young and more importantly quite expensive at the time, so with a few exceptions, we still got hand-drawn films for the time being, now with more 3D effects, alongside Japanese anime from the likes of Studio Ghibli becoming more mainstream to Western audiences, even going into the early 2000s. But now, it was started to become more evident that 3D was the future of theatrical animation. The technology was starting to become more affordable, Pixar were entering their golden age with their films. More and more studios were embracing the technology, competing with Pixar, and this showed in the box office. Theatrical 2D animated films were slowly dying with many being box office bombs, including Sinbad Legend of the Seven Seas being such a massive bomb for DreamWorks that it made them separate their animation department on top of never making 2D films ever again. Then leading to a never-ending game of hot potato ever since. And Disney, despite massively contributing to the medium for the first half of the decade, the box office disappointments of Treasure Planet and Home of the Range forced them to evolve into 3D. For better, or in this case, worse. But that didn't mean theatrical 2D animation was entirely dead, we still got the odd Curious George, the Simpsons movie was a massive success grossing half a billion dollars at the box office, and anime and indie films to help back us up. But right at the tail end of the decade, the last major animated film of the 2000s, The Princess and the Frog, was hand-drawn, and from Disney's main animation studio no less, starting a brand new renaissance for them, showing us that there's still hope for theatrical 2D animation after all. This is what I generally refer to as the death of theatrical 2D animation, where every major film in this decade pretty much consisted of CGI, effectively devaluing 2D animation. If you really want to watch 2D animation during this time, put on the TV. The only major 2D films from this decade I could think off the top of my head are Winnie the Pooh, Sponge Out of Water, and Teen Titans Go to the Movies, and that's really about it and I think I know just who to blame for the 2D drought here. Winnie the Pooh. Please hear me out. A decade prior, Disney milked the everlasting daylight out of the silly old bear with countless movies and TV shows begging to fill a landfill somewhere, and Disney's animation department after releasing The Princess and the Frog expressed interest in making 2D films every two years. And their next film was another Winnie the Pooh film that could easily be mistaken for others in the franchise you put out a decade ago, and even the 1977 classic? 
I'm not saying that's exactly how it bombed, but at that point it was kind of asking for it. Because of its disappointing box office performance, Disney never made another 2D film since, with the mindset that we don't want to see another 2D animated movie. No, Disney. We just don't want to see another Woody the Turd movie! Thankfully, we saw independent animation studios like Cartoon Saloon filling the 2D void for us, as well as Japanese anime like usual. But even then, things weren't looking great, especially for Studio Ghibli. Despite being active during the former half of the decade, they became radio silent after when Marine was theirs released in 2014, halting production due to Hayao Miyazaki's retirement, with some fearing that the studio shut down, and tragedy striking as co-founder Hiseo Takahata, who directed such films as Grave of the Fireflies and The Tale of Princess Kaguya, passed away in 2018. But thankfully, they made another film in 2020, and- Ugh, It's disgusting! Yes, Airwick and the Witch, their first ever CGI feature-length film, and I already looked at it a couple of years ago. So I think we can all agree that Airwick and the Witch is Studio Ghibli's Cars 2, a film so bad that it damages the reputation of what's otherwise a fantastic company. I didn't like this movie, and it turns out that I'm not alone. This was not what fans wanted. Whilst the film had a myriad of problems, the biggest complaint was the animation. This ugly-looking film did not fit a studio renowned for its beautiful animation. We waited six years for another Ghibli film, and you gave us this?! Because of this, it's now the lowest-rated Studio Ghibli film, and it's the official piss stain of their film backlog. This is all your fault! God, is this where the future of theatrical animation is taking us? Thankfully not, as in 2018, a film called Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse came out, and it has a very stylish look to it, incorporating 2D elements into a 3D film. While it didn't revolutionize animation the same way Snow White or Toy Story did, it is a breath of fresh air for the medium, and made us forgive Sony Pictures Animation for making this. This then led to more films such as The Mitchells vs. The Machines, Puss in Boots The Last Wish, Team and Team Mutant Mayhem, and even The Bad Guys to use this more stylized approach to 3D animation, taking plenty of cues from 2D. In 2023, Disney released Once Upon a Studio, celebrating the studio's centennial with loads of their classic hand-drawn characters in it, with legendary Disney animator Eric Goldberg also pretty much confirming that the studio is looking into making 2D films again. Strays had a 2D animated segment for some reason, and Studio Ghibli remembered how to make good movies again, with The Boy and the Heron getting Hayao Miyazaki out of retirement, and the film released to critical acclaim and win the Academy Award of Best Animated Feature. This year, a brand new Looney Tunes film, The Day the Earth Blew Up, will be releasing in theaters, and it already has good reviews, and distribution will be handled outside of Warner Brothers, so they won't be able to cancel it. And say it with me now, Release Coyote vs. Acme! Inside Out 2 has a hand-drawn character in the film, and at the end of the year, The Lord of the Rings, The War of the Rohirrim, animated by Anime Studios Solo Entertainment, will be released. And that's not even all of them, as in 2026, we got Ang the Last Airbender and the freaking Cats in the Hat to look forward to. I at least pray they're hand-drawn. It's amazing to see the resurgence of theatrical 2D animation, and I'm impressed that it took this long for the industry to realize that there's still an audience for these kinds of films. It won't be overnight where we see numerous hand-drawn films on the big screen again like we did during the Renaissance, but with how things have been going, especially after The Boy and the Heron winning Best Animated Feature at the Oscars, it's a good step in the right direction, further showcasing the never-ending appeal of animation. And now is a better time than ever to be a fan of theatrical 2D animation, as the best is yet to come. And I can't wait to see that new Looney Tunes movie. Thanks for watching.